KYANI.net, and I'm Pat Sheranian. I want to share with you the most exciting experience I have had health wise in the past 15 years. In July 2010, I had the opportunity to start using the three Kyani, KYANI products every day. Within weeks, the medications I was taking for adult onset diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol were no longer needed. I now experience normal blood sugars, blood pressure, and cholesterol, and have for the past 14 months. My life has changed all for the better. Plus, the pain from arthritis is gone, and I have the energy of a person years younger. It has been amazing and wonderful, and if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, give Kayani a try. It is 100% guaranteed. Please contact me at our chat room at pat.utahvalleylive.com or leave your name, phone number, and request at 801-362-9552, 362 Good morning, my dear. Good morning, my dear. How are you, Pat? So good. With me this morning, or today, is, but depending on where you are in the world, you're either in the morning or the afternoon, we're on radio station KHQN, 18 or 1480 a.m. on your dial. Some of you are watching us on internet, pat, utahvalleylive.com. You can watch either or. And with me is the senior sales manager for the Utah Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Julia and I have been friends too long. And aren't we the lucky ones? <laughs> we, are the lucky. we are the lucky ones. Some years ago, Julia and I met, and uh, she has wound up in her career. We're all very excited about what she's doing because Utah Valley has come become a major hub for excitement. It has. It has. And new things are happening. So if you're local listening to us on the radio, you care about Utah Valley because you probably live in it. And we're going to talk about some things that happened this weekend, some things that are just happening today, some things that are going to be happening over the next weeks. Yes, we are. Okay. Let's go. What's happening in Utah Valley? Well, it's an exciting time in Utah Valley. We're actually becoming quite the destination, and we've been, been in the news a lot. I think the most recent thing that's exciting about Utah Valley is the announcement that was made just this last Saturday about how the old Provo Tabernacle that was burned, um, not completely burned down, but it was gutted out through fire last December. Actually, it was December 17th, I believe. Um, or maybe it started the night, the day before. But I worked directly across from the old tabernacle. Right across the street. Right. The Utah Valley Convention Visitors Bureau is located at 111 South University Avenue. And that's in Provo, the corner of 100 South and University. And the old Provo Tabernacle is kitty corner from us. So I remember before I came to work, I was getting up that morning and I heard on the radio that it was on fire and it just devastated me. The first thing I did was call Megan, my sales coordinator, to tell her if she'd heard yet or not. So by the time I got into work, everything was blocked off and everybody had come down to watch it and take pictures. And I can honestly say I've never seen a group of people mourn over a building. Um, oh, we all did. Yeah, I did from wherever we are or wherever we were at the time because all of us have been at that building at one time or another or seen it or had children who graduated for semin from seminary or we've been in a choir or we've been there attending a meeting, one meeting or another, and it was just like, it's personal to all of us, very personal. It was very personal. It was devastating. I was in the parking lot and there was an, an elderly man came up to me and he, he was in his 80s and he was sharing his memories and things that he had done there and we stood there together and cried yeah. and it was yeah. just a very tender, tender moment. So needless to say, we didn't get much work done that day yeah. because we were all outside talking to people, sharing thoughts and feelings and, and taking pictures. So I remember that day very well. And of course, it's been sitting there for almost a year. They cleaned up all the burn, took out all the seats, the paintings were gone. I mean, everything was just burned up inside the building. It was a shell. You're right, it was a mm -hmm. shell. And it's just all been cleaned up and kind of uh, covered in, in uh, plastic covering, and we weren't sure what was going to happen to it in our Provo town, which is where we're talking to you from. And, and I hope you're watching <laughs> us from there wherever you are. And so we didn't know what was going to happen to it. But Saturday, the announcement came 
through um, the LDS church and it, the big announcement was that they were going to rebuild it with full preservation, completely preserve how it was back when it was built in the late 1800s. And it'll have this center steeple in the, mi in the middle of the roof with the angel Moroni up there. That's how it was built originally with that. I didn't know that. Yes. So yes. they're restoring it to the original. Mm -hmm. And yes. it's going to be a temple. A temple. That's the big news. That's the big That's news. That's the big news. An LDS temple right downtown Provo, across from the old county courthouse, mm -hmm. across from uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And also the big news is that Provo now has two temples. Which is amazing. Totally amazing. So what they'll they're probably... They're not quite seven minutes apart. That's true. From where they are. Yeah. So they'll probably realign the districts of who goes to what temple and, and that. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Actually, a little another little bit of news. Back in the end of July, I was calling um, several hotels because what I do is I'm the senior sales manager for the Convention Visitors Bureau, and I basically I sell Utah Valley. And what that means is I work with groups, whether they're um, meeting planners or sports groups, religious groups, or tour operators, and we work with them and try to help them have the meetings here, encourage them to come so here. So do you fly around around the country and go meet with people who have large companies and they would come here to have a convention? I do, but I meet, mostly go to trade shows for okay. the industry. Okay. So it's trade shows for meeting planners, meeting um, MPI is Meeting Professions International, um, NTA, National Tour Association. Um, we go to a lot of those trade shows where those meeting planners will come to. And so then they come into our community. Right. For the big event. Right. So and they ski Utah. Yes, they ski Utah and they hike Utah and um, do a lot of technology in Utah. So the story is I was making phone calls to check on hotel rooms and availability and rates for a client. And I called the Travel Lodge, which is right across the street from us. And there was a young college co-ed working there. And I told him about the dates and I needed some rooms for this event. And he said, well, he said, I don't know if it's common knowledge or not. Now, this was in July. And he said, but the LDS church just purchased us and we'll be closed the end of August. And I said, really? <laughs> and he said, yes. And I said, well, I guess I won't be asking you for rates or bids, will I? And he said, no. So I hung up the phone. I run out into the middle of our office. I go, such news, such news I have for you. <laughs> and everybody comes running out. I go, okay, here's the rumor. So we've known for a while that the, the question was what were they going to do exactly with the property. So the church purchased the Travel Lodge, and then there's Three Amigos Restaurant, and then there's an empty lot. And they're okay. going to, I'm going to guess a parking structure. I'm going to guess that too. Actually, a in visitor center or something. Yes. Actually, in the... Um, the newspaper, the Daily Herald, they said that just last week the Provo Municipal Council approved the sale of property on the corner of that block, that right, that 200 right. South on University Avenue, and they say that underground parking garage will be built there. Good. So and that's very badly needed anyway. Down. Yeah, we'll definitely yep, need good. need that. But that's that's probably the most recent exciting thing that's happening in Utah Valley, and that is exciting. We also have something else going on. About a year ago, I could have gotten a, a, any kind of a studio or anything I wanted on Center Street in Provo for very little money or really free. In the last few weeks, I've been going up and down trying to find some space to open our studio. Everything has gone rocket sky high. All the new development coming in, the tabernacle, which we didn't know about, being turned into a mm -hmm. temple, mm -hmm. and all of Provo is changing. Mm -hmm. And it's affecting all of Utah Valley. Everybody will win from this whole situation that's going on right here in the county seat. So, what can you tell me about the gorgeous new building that's coming up right on Center Street in downtown Provo? Well, that is the new Utah Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau. New home is going to be in there, but the building is the new Utah Valley Convention Center. So we finally have a convention center. And what takes place in there? Because I dialed the wrong number trying to reach you, and I got 
the guy that is the manager or the director or something of the convention center. And that's Danny Wheeler. Yes, yes, it was. Yes. Or his cohort or something. Okay. But anyway, he started talking about it, and I didn't have time to go for 20 minutes, but there must be a lot going on, and it's already booked. Yes, we, we are already booked. Um, right. Not booked solid, but we are booking, which is pretty exciting. The first group that we booked in the convention center, um, wonderful lady Lenore, who is involved with the National Siberian Husky Club, happens to live right here in um, Spanish, no, not Spanish Fork, Hobble Creek in okay. Springville. And um, she came to us because she wanted to bring their national convention here and showcase Utah. Good. And that's what we are looking for. We're looking for people that w belong to organizations and want to have there are national meetings here and, and highlight our area. So she approached us and we did a lot of talking and working through it. So the first piece of business we booked is a dog show. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> which, is, which is great. So they're going to be here in October. What, do you, what are we going to watch at a dog show in a convention center? Well, um, the public is, is there invited. is there a huge arena? Yes, they have they have an arena where the dogs. I'm thinking of a stage where I would go and see a production. No, 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 no because it has to be on concrete floor because of the nature of the beast. So, but how is it otherwise? If we go see a play in there, we have a symphony. Well, there's three levels, and oh. so there's a um, exhibition hall is on the main floor. And um, so this would be in the exhibition hall, I would right. guess. Okay. And the exhibition hall is, let me get my statistics correct here. It is on the first level and it's 19,620 square feet. Okay. And so that's all concrete floor. And so that's completely wired with electricity throughout the whole floor. And um, so they could do trade shows there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They could do uh, all kinds of skating things there. They could do any kind of production that would require a room that big, or you could just have a meeting. Right, and it actually divides into three different sections with air walls. So if you don't need that much space, we can divide it and actually have three things going on at once. Right, and but we have needed that on this side of the mountain. Oh, we have desperately. We'd like to, you know, we're, we're not competing at all with Salt Palace or South Town because we're not them, but um, a lot of business that here in Utah Valley goes up to Salt Lake um, for their meetings because they, we didn't have the space, like right, you said. Right. So now we have some space for some of their smaller okay, venues. Okay, what's on another floor? Because I know there's some smaller venues there. Right, second floor will be the ballroom, and it's actually a large ballroom, and it's, of course, carpeted. If you seat people, how many can you actually seat at tables in there? 1,200 people. That is big. That is exciting. That is really big because for years we've all used other hotels in the area, other, mm -hmm. other arenas, smaller. Couldn't get everybody together that wanted to come. Right. This is great. A thousand? Yes. At seats? Yes. Woo! Yes. Okay, that's good. And and actually up to 2,000 if it's theater style, which means just chair right, after right. chair after row of yeah. chair. Right. Great. That is good. So then the second level is the ballroom, like I just said, and that's going to be 16,894 square feet. And you can that invite will, all your friends. I can invite <laughs> a few of them. <laughs> I don't know. You, Pat, you, you're the one that has so many friends. We'll, you can, invite, them. we'll invite all the friends. We'll now. invite all the friends, and, and that's the ballroom. And there's a full kitchen, full service kitchen. Oh, that's nice. And that nice. Um, the company is called Ovations that will be doing all the catering. And there is. Are, are they local? No, they are through Global Spectrum. Global Spectrum is the managing company of the con new convention center. So okay. it's their catering company. And they have received a lot of awards and accolades. And So the food will be good, is what I'm hearing you say. Yes, it will be very good. Okay. And we will make sure it's very good. Okay. But because of the reputation, and you know as well as I, no matter what event you go to or what meeting, if the food is good, it's a success. As long as I never <coughs> have to eat another rubber chicken, I'll be so happy. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what we can do, do about that. And then on the third floor um, is really exciting because that's where our breakout space is or meeting rooms. Where they, if they want to divide up into three different breakouts. So if you're doing a, a convention for a particular product or something, you can have training rooms all the way around, that type of thing. Right. And they will be on the third level. On the third level. And are they divided up or can you move walls? I mean, are they set rooms like a hotel where they're wall walls or can you move? They're set rooms, but one of them is called the junior ballroom. And then that one you can divide up into three sections. 
section. Oh, actually, five sections. That's wonderful. Right, and then there'll be a few other small ones. I think there's about nine. Will they be available for weddings? Yes. And receptions and things of that nature? Right. Oh, that's great. And what's really exciting about that floor up there is there's also a boardroom, and the view is the entire mountain range of the northeast mountains oh, that we have around beautiful, here. Beautiful. So that boardroom is about 663 square feet. Then you go out on the north part of the building up there on the third floor and Does it go outside? Yes, and there's a garden reception area. Oh my, how lovely. So it's, it's about it's, time. Yes, and that that will accommodate I think if I have my numbers correctly, about 200 people outside there. Nice. And because of security and safety reasons, they can only they have to limit it. And then this, about 200 people. Yeah, to about 200 people. But the views are all of the north, Mount Timpanogos, oh, and beautiful. then Y Mountain. And you can even see the lake off to your left. So oh, it's, beautiful. it's going to be a wonderful venue. We're, we're so excited to have that. So that, that is actually on Center Street and 200 West. Okay. So it's right next to the Provo Marriott. It's right off the freeway, the I-15. Yes, it's very I mean, accessible. Right into town. Yeah, oh, very accessible. Wonderful. Great yeah. location. And from there, it would be about 25 minutes from that location right up to Sundance, on up to Park City. Right. That's a great location. It is. Great location it, it, is a, it is wonderful. And actually, I've talked with a lot of different associations and um, colleges and universities throughout the state, and they're thrilled to have it here because it's more centrally located. Um, people that are like coming up from Dixie, um, when I was talking to them, they said, oh, that's wonderful. One less hour of driving. It's true. And it's true. And even people from Logan and up north coming, coming down, it's not quite as far either. Well, Marriott Hotel now is downtown right in that same neighborhood. Right, right. And they have, um, they really don't quite have rooms that large. They don't. They have a wonderful facility there. But do they fit in with this in any way? I mean, how does this work? Uh, they sure do. They, their meeting space will be used for overflow for off or for off off-site events. Um, several groups we've been talking to that, of course, the Marriott Hotel will be the host hotel for, for these large conventions. Yeah, because it's our only full-service hotel. So, it so you can come and dance, but you have nowhere to sleep. No. Yeah. Okay, so we have the hotel. Yeah, Good. so, that, so yeah. that will be used as a headquarters hotel. And then they're also considering a sky bridge being built oh. across from the Marriott directly to the convention center and that decision actually will be made fairly soon and so both Utah County and the Provo Marriott are really interested in seeing a sky bridge go across oh, for those good. events. We need to mention our sponsor again as Julia is telling you they of course the the visitors bureau is uh, and convention center is one of our sponsors and that's why she's here today. Mm -hmm. We also I'm going to mention Kayani again K-Y-A-N-I these are products that I think are wonderful because they have totally changed my life. So I want to give you a, a phone number again how to, and, uh, to get hold of me. 801-362-9552. 801-362-9552. Just a reminder that if you're on streaming video live, you're able to chat in our chat room and we have somebody monitoring that. So if you'd like to send us a note or a question, please do so in our chat room. We'd be happy to answer if we're able to. Thank you. All right. Um, Wait a minute. Since we're giving out phone numbers and information, I would be remiss if I did not let people know about Absolutely. our website. Absolutely. I just get so excited with talking with you, Pat, that I don't stay focused <laughs> like I should. But our website is very easy to remember. It's utahvalley.com. And you go there, and it's a wonderful website. We've actually received best of state for our website and several of, nice. our, several of the things that we've done at the Convention Visitors Bureau. So our website again is utahvalley.com and we have some Facebook accounts. We actually give away a lot of free things on our Facebook accounts. We post like for... So we type in Utah Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau? No, utahvalley.com. Oh, and that takes you to everything. That takes you to okay. our website. Okay. And then on Facebook, um, we have Meet in Utah Valley. Okay. And we have Filmed in Utah Valley. And we have Sports in Utah Valley, or Utah Valley Sports. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. but And we post on there free tickets, like when we... Um, 
we were the main sponsor up at Sundance for the summer theater this year. Where Which they, was so good. Isn't it cute? It so was good. cute. Yeah, uh, the Sound of Music is what they did. And so we, we posted there that, you know, um, come into our office and if you want two free tickets. And so, Just walk in? Yeah. So, oh. so if you keep up with us on Facebook, you'll be able to get lots of free tickets to things. And so that's something that we're doing. And actually, if you... Um, <coughs> is there a phone number? Yes, it is 801-851-2100-2100. Okay. And if you call in today or come into our office and say that you saw Julia on Pat Sheranian's show here, utahvalleylive.com, we have free children's tickets. We'll give you two free children's tickets to the Piccadilly Circus, which well, is coming. coming. It is. It's coming. It's going to be at the UCCU Center there at Utah Valley University. Fun. Monday the 10th and Tuesday the 11th. And so those tickets are valued at $7.99 each. And so all you have to do is walk in and get them. Uh, well, you have to say you heard Julia oh, that's right. on utahvalleylive.com or call 801-851-2100 and say you heard about it on Utah Valley Live. Okay, 801-851-2100. Make sure you mention Julia's name or mine. Okay, that'll work. You can remember Pat and Julia <laughs> and let them know that you liked what you heard and you're there to pick up your tickets. I think that's fun. I'll it is first fun. in line. It is fun. <laughs> you only get two, though. Oh, okay. And All it's right. first come, first serve. Okay, now, you, I just uh, thought of something that uh, you had mentioned, and that's that you may be relocating, and your location is terrific. Is there anything happening there? Right. Well, with the new convention center being built, they have allocated space for us in our offices there. You're going to move into that gorgeous new building? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah, so we'll be moving um, in April. Um, the convention center will be completed by the 1st of April. So we Next will be year. moving. Yes, which Next is year. way soon. Way soon. Way soon. <laughs> and um, I sort of joked with my boss, said, yeah, I think I'll take the whole month of April off. <laughs> That would actually be foolish. So. Now, I mentioned that the manager, because I kind of bumped into that by accident, but I really don't know what Max and I don't know too much about him. Maybe you could share who's going to be managing this convention center. And right, we'll right. Everybody in there. Right. Yeah, that's um, Danny Wheeler, and he came here to us from St. Charles, Missouri where um, the same company, Global Spectrum, okay. was managing that convention center there. And um, Danny is, um, you can reach Danny at 801-851-2201. Give it again. 801-851-2201. Okay. Now, the reason you would call um, the convention center directly is if you have an event that is just a one-day event or a few hours like a luncheon or a one-day seminar. Fashion show. Right, whatever is a one-day. Okay. Anything that requires hotel rooms that are attached to it, if it's a group that they're going to need hotel rooms, we are the to-go-to people first because we will then... So they, they call the convention center first, then they contact you. No. If they need hotel rooms right. with their group, they call the convention and visitors bureau first. Oh. Okay. Okay. Because then we will be the ones that will send the information to the convention center and the hotels. All right. So if they need rooms, they call us first at 801-851-2100. Or if they just need space at the convention center, they would call 801-851-2200 actually is to their um, administrative assistant. Okay, let me do that again. Okay. So if you're calling the uh, convention center directly, it's 801-851-2200, is that right? Yes. 2200. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 2200. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Well, and you're going to be on the ground floor there? Is that we're just kind of walk in the door? Are you going to yeah. Be, are you? Yes. So we're going to have a little area. It won't be as big as our visitors bureau right now. But we'll have a little area there with all of our free maps and brochures and information on the area right there at the so convention center. So if you have center. guests coming into town, send them to you. Yes, People definitely. People that haven't been here before. Definitely. Um, I know you give out a lot of information about this whole area. Well, it's great. And on our website, actually, utahvalley.com, 
Um, to the right, when you come up the main page, it has a place where you can put in the dates that you're going to be here, and it will Is pull a up kiosk? a calendar. Like a kiosk, like a computer? What's there? Uh, on the screen on the computer when okay. you go on. But we do have a, a, an eye pad kiosk now in our convention center. I heard that. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's pretty great. nifty. But you can just put in the dates you're going to be here and then we'll uh, it'll pop up what's going on around town. What do you personally feel about what's happening with downtown? I am just thrilled. Actually, I was born and raised in Chicago. Came out here in the 70s to get on the BYU ski team. And what? oh, you didn't know I didn't that. know that. Yeah. Yeah, my dad taught us how to ski on the little hills of northern Illinois and Wisconsin. And then we traveled a lot for family vacation skiing, and we had come out here. And so when it's time for college, my brother and I said, we want to go somewhere where we can get really good at skiing. So he came out before me, and he got on the ski team. And being a tomboy, I was going to do whatever my brother did, so I came out also. So that's how I came out here originally. I didn't know that. Well, good. So yeah. you, you know the ski hills. I do. You know, you know what's really happening. Yeah, it's just the best snow on earth. You know, I worked for the Chamber of Commerce for a number of years, and that was one of the big questions we would be asked. They want to know what, where is the best skiing, Sundance? Well, it's not year-round like some of the other places, but anywhere in Utah is good skiing. Oh, it is. And, uh, and actually, I think of all the places I've skied, and I know a lot of people would agree with me on this, Sundance has the most stunning views. With that Timpanogos, well, and then, their snow's not quite as long because they're not right. Our like season's I said, they're 25 not minutes from where we're sitting right now, you know. So right, it's not that high up. But it's just it's just a quaint. It's it's a unique ski resort because it's not so commercialized. And Robert Redford has done an amazing job keeping it pure and pristine like that. But new news also talking about Sundance is they have built and it's it's it was built about a year ago last September. It opened up in 2010 the new Redford Conference Center, which is... Where? It's in there between, it's just, here you have the um, Long. rehearsal hall. Okay. The rehearsal hall, okay. okay. And then the Indian and the you water the coming through. Okay. Uh -huh. And then over here you have the screening room. Right. And then it's right here. So it's oh. it's in sort of where... Off of that back parking lot. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's where well, it's that's at. That's easy to get to. It is. It is. And it's, it's beautiful. It's about... Um, 3,500 square feet, and um, of course it was made with the environment in mind, and it has a hand-placed stone hearth, reclaimed barn wood is throughout the whole building, and geothermal heating and cooling, oh, that's which they're pretty excited about hitting this year mark to see how it has been, you know, good for the envir environment and how much cheaper it's cost them. And there's also a lawn area for events where they've had some weddings in the in the nicer months of One the year. Hours of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, and, uh, it's this great. is a great picture. Unfortunately, it's not going to show up if we pick it up. But is this a, a large room? here or what is that? Yes, th this is the main room of the conference center. Oh, and how many people will that seat? Well, it will seat 160 people for meals, meaning okay. at rounds. That's a nice size. And then classroom style 128 and that is tables also. And then theater style 250 and reception about 300. I think there are a lot of people that don't know Sundance is here. Mm -hmm. And I want to invite everyone to go up to Sundance and to start with Julia, and she'll map you out a whole tour that they can go through. You do that? I do. To help people know where to go when they when they come to the valley to see the right things. I do. We actually partnered with Sundance in bringing some site tours here of meeting planners. And next week, um, Green Spa is coming, and they're environmental spas that are you know careful about all of those things. And I'm actually going to help lead a few hikes early in the morning up sure to sure you are oh. <laughs> hey hey my daughter and I Saturday got up early hiked up to Stewart Falls we came running down the trail and I jumped over something and I yelled that would be a snake and my daughter was you know 20 seconds behind me and she went yes that's a snake and then we turned the corner pat and there was four deer bouncing across the path <sighs> Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. I, I will be leading the hikes for them <laughs> next week, early in the morning. Early in the morning. Very early in the morning, yes. <laughs> is that under your job description? It is. We work very closely with the meeting planners that um, once we've 
worked with them and signed a contract, we're not done. We, we like to go to their events, follow up with them, ask them if there's anything else they need. For anybody? Yes, Everybody? for anybody. Mm -hmm. I work and a we're lot. We're talking all over the United States, they come here. Right. Out of the country, they come here. Right. Wherever they hear about it, they're welcome to come. They're welcome to come. Also work with family reunions and help you get reduced hotel rooms for that. What else do you have, which is great? That's mm -hmm. not always easy to do. No. Um, Going on in the in the we've had I know we've had the uh, what am I going to say the fair not the fair they had what do they have down in the Spanish Fork the Utah County Fair the Utah County Fair right and they just had that so we have things going on from the point of the mountain all the way down we do we and do you want to name do you have any of them right at the top of your head well we have a lot of festivals that that go on here and um, of course fourth of July it's the largest celebration in the state of Utah it down is? here for the Stadium of Fire mm -hmm. and the, it's actually called the Freedom Festival and they have a big gala event where they honor um, between four to five people who have done and shown patriotism right at the stadium no that's actually has been held in the past at the BYU ballroom Okay, but that's something that we could easily host at the convention center in the future for them also. That would be very nice. Because sometimes what happens with these successful events is they outgrow the venue they're at, and they sometimes could outgrow that venue. And I'll mention that this is the home of BYU football team because they won Friday night. They did. they did not won. I would not mention it. They okay. did. It was a fun game. We need to take a little break, and uh, we're going to have some commercials coming up here. So can we do that? We'll be back. See you soon. Okay. Okay. Kayani, that's K-Y-A-N-I dot net, and I'm Pat Sharanian. I want to share with you the most exciting experience I've had health-wise in the past 15 years. In July 2010, I had the opportunity to start using the three Kayani products every day. <clears throat> Within weeks, the medications I was taking for adult onset diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol were no longer needed. I now experience normal blood sugars, blood pressure, and cholesterol, and have for the past 14 months. My life has changed all for the better. Plus, the pain from arthritis is gone, and I have the energy of a person years younger, right? Oh, you bet, babe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it has been amazing and wonderful. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, give Kayani a try. It is 100% guaranteed. Please contact me in our chat room at pat.utahvalleylive.com or leave your name, phone number, and request at 801 
And may I say, you look marvelous. And you also, my dear. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> my guest today is um, Julia Curry, and she is with the Utah Valley uh, Convention and, Bureau, and Visitors Bureau, and she is the senior sales manager there, which means I sell Utah Valley. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, we've covered, if you've just joined us, we are, we've covered a number of topics, and I want to go back a little bit to... Uh, we mentioned the walking trails, but I'd like to go back and pick up on that a little bit because there are a number I know walking trails, which I've never been on and I'll probably never see except oh. in pictures. Um, but they're interesting. They and I think it's one of the main attractions that we have off season, uh, what uh, snow being the big season here and skiing and snowboarding. So if you'll share with us where some of those are, I think that would be interesting for people to know about. Well, one of the most popular is the Provo River Trail. And um, it goes all the way from... Now, I've biked on that. Oh, good. Yeah, I've been on that biking, so... Good. I know that works. Yeah, and it's beautiful, especially this time of the year with all the leaves changing. I've told some people, I said, New England has nothing on Utah it's Valley. Tough. It is just stunning. The colors and with all the rain we had earlier this summer. So green, so many leaves yeah. have turned. Yeah, now they've turned. So the Provo River Trail is a very popular one. And you can actually start up Provo Canyon and go all the way down to Provo Lake on that Provo River Trail. And coming west, coming mm -hmm. down the canyon, yes. coming down the canyon. canyon. So drive up have somebody pick you up on the other end. Right, or ride your bike up and then go all the way, all the way down. back down. But we do have such a, a active lifestyle here in, in Utah as a whole, and especially in Utah Valley, that you will always see people cycling, running, jogging, walking those trails. And lots of young mothers with their babies in their buggies pushing them, and, and dads on their bikes with the kids are attached on some kind of little trailer behind the bike and um, lots of um, lots of sporting events use that area too for marathons and and for so is that the main hiking trail that you would mention or yes. there others yes yes well there's another one that's um, a potential new one that's currently underway um, so it's not potential because it's currently it's underway <laughs> The, the Murdoch Canal Trail is the largest trail project currently underway in Utah Valley. I have no idea what that is. Well, it's going to be, and I don't know all the specifics either, but you can Google it. The Murdoch, M-U-R-D-O-C-K Trail, <laughs> Canal actually, Canal Trail, and it will connect the Provo River Trail to the Jordan River Trail near Thanksgiving Point. Going north. Going north, right. So it's going to be approximately 20 miles of paved trail through northern Utah County. Um, it started in 2009 and it's expected to be completed in 2012. So a lot is happening in By 2012. Next, yeah. Right. Besides elections. Besides elections. And another thing we didn't mention, which is so exciting for us in downtown Provo, is that New Skin is adding a huge new project, and it's called the Innovation they Center. Are. Yes. And you've talked to, I know, Gary Garrett about I that. Yeah, talked to Gary about it. And uh, the uh, downstairs, the very bottom ground floor, will be retail stores all the mm. way around, bringing in a whole just a plethora of stores mm -hmm. that are not down there now, downtown Provo. So it's exciting, very exciting. It is exciting. We're just thrilled to have, but between, between that, New Skin's new Innovation Center, and the new Convention Center, and the new Provo Tabernacle Temple, it's, it's just an exciting time. I know a lot of new restaurants are coming on. There are also. about 13 on one side of the street from where the old library used to be in Provo. Oh, yes down to State Street. Oh, really? An amazing amount of restaurants Oh, that's there. great. And that's there will great. be more. There will be more. One is already set right now for fine dining. In fact, two of them are for fine dining, which will take your pre-theater crowd. True. At the convention center. Yeah, there. for the Covey right. Center also. Yeah, that's across there. the street. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Great. Um, the other day I had a friend that was trying to get from Sundance over to, uh, to San Francisco, so we began exploring. And uh, I found out, I didn't know this, that Frontier Airlines has, a, has flights right out of Provo. It Let's does. Go, let's go Provo. <laughs> it does. They have jet airlines taking off and going places, Frontier Airlines. So any of you that would like to stop that drive to Salt Lake and, uh, and do something a little closer could give Frontier Airlines a call. 
see what they've got going on. What do you know about it? How will it impact uh, the Provo area as far as visitors? Well, you know? it already has impacted it. Has? It. it has. How, it's, long has it been, how long have you been running airlines like The that? first um, this, official... This puddle jumpers that everybody had right. puddling over No, this the is a big jet. This is a big jet. The first flight was actually um, Tuesday, June 21st. And a bunch of our um, dignitaries from the area, business just owners. Just this past June. Yes, okay, just June. I'm glad it wasn't a year ago. No, I no, no. It. Where have I been? <laughs> no, it's okay. You're doing fine, Pat. No, um, they they flew over, and actually Joel Raker, the CEO of our Convention Visitors Bureau, um, went over as did um, city councilmen. Um, I think Gary Garrett was on there from New Skins and, and county commissioners and our marketing director Arnold went also. So they went over there and then for us, I think they met with the Denver Convention Visitors Bureau because we want to establish that relationship and then they flew back that same day. So they day. flew from Pro Provo to Denver, Denver uh -huh. on this jet. Right. They left at 8.30 in the morning and then they came home at 9 o'clock at night. Oh, how fun. So there's a flight every day um, in the morning. And then there's a flight that comes back every night from Denver. So we know it goes back and forth to Denver. And if you want to connect to other places, it probably would have to be at the hub in Denver. Yeah, actually, I flew it already. Yeah. I did. It was so so exciting just to go right down to, to Provo. Um, my counterpart, Lee Adamson, who's overall sports, religion, and film for for our um, Visitors Bureau, we had a trade show in Chicago in August, and so we flew out of Provo. And so we checked our tickets, because we're always trying to be as economical as we can with our business reports, and so for us to fly from Provo via Denver to Chicago, instead of Salt Lake, Denver, Chicago, both Frontier Airlines routes, it was $70 cheaper to fly out of Provo than Salt Lake. Wonderful. That's so, good news. So, that is good news. So that's Thank where you. we went, and that could have been, you know, some of the initial sale prices they had to get it off the ground. But actually, it was really fun. So we went in, and of course, there's a TSA set up. And um, I know they've worked out this bug, but unfortunately, on that day in August, the TSA machines had broken. So everybody had to be patted down. And there was a few women that weren't too happy. But you know, what are you going to do? Just do what you have to do. <laughs> and so it was beautiful flying out because we flew right over Timpanogos and I could see Sundance and it was just just gorgeous. Actually, it's... Um, yeah, if you flew that way, you went over Corner of Heber and then you also went over Park City uh, uh, on that route, right? Mm -hmm. Over Timpanogos? Right. Well, more Heber. And okay, then start more, started. Because it goes that direction. Yeah, then okay, a little a little more way. south. Okay. So there are daily flights, and of course Frontier flies to 80 destinations. So like you were saying, you can easily Hook use there. that. Mm -hmm. And there was one lady I talked to in in the waiting area there who did exactly that. She has grandchildren here, and she was from the Los Angeles area, and she was so excited that she flew from Los Angeles to Denver, and then Denver because she wanted to fly into Provo. <laughs> Right. So she was there. Also, um, so wait, what's the flight time from Provo to Denver? Hour? Yeah. Okay. About that. Okay. About that. That's what it takes you to get from Provo to Salt Lake. Exactly. On the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, now with construction, with it construction, could be. construction, add a half hour. It could be worse. So um, the visitor's experience, I started to tell you, has been really positive. Um, they love the convenience and the value. And on-site parking is $3.50 per day. Nowhere. Yeah, nowhere can you find that. And 60% um, of the ridership is actually from out-of-state flyers. That's interesting. And all the flights have been averaging at 85% capacity. So it's been very successful. My guest today is Julia Curry. She is with the convention, and uh, I'm going to get it right yet. Hang on. With the Utah Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau. And Julia, why don't we give these phone numbers out again for people that might be uh, looking to come this direction, and let's start with your phone number. Okay. Our phone number at the Convention and Visitors Bureau, you can call us at 801-851. I almost give you my, I'll give you my number, <laughs> my direct number. That's okay. I'm in sales. You can call me directly, but 851-2100. Sorry, lots of, and I almost gave out my cell phone number. I, I saw that coming. It's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> so that's for the Convention Visitors Bureau. Call us for any information, any help you need. If you have a group coming in, we'd be more than happy to help you. All our services are free. We can set up hotel rooms at a reduced rate and meeting space and itineraries for you. And if you need to 
reach just the convention center, the new convention center. That phone number is 801-851-2100. And our website at the Convention Visitors Bureau is utahvalley.com. How easy is that? That's great. And again, we're grateful to Kayani. We appreciate all that they have done for each one of us that have been involved in this company and on these products. And to get more information about Kayani, please call me, 801-362-9552, 801-362-9552. Please chat with us today. If you're uh, on the, the internet, we'd love to know your thoughts and feelings and uh, well up to a point. And then uh, <laughs> also any questions that you might have. Okay, Julia, we have a couple more things that I do want to talk about, and one of them is the um, Children's Museum. I remember years ago we had a children's doll museum. Do you remember that here in Provo? They had many, a little house, and she had dolls collected no, for no. many generations. Oh, really? And they would hold children's tea, uh, little birthday parties there. Oh, how and nice. And a special room, and the whole building was filled with dolls. Well, they had retired, uh -huh. and that has gone away. So I haven't seen much about children's museums in a while. So tell me about it. Well, I I'm really excited. One of, one of the main draws for Utah Valley when I go out and sell and try to get groups to come here is Thanksgiving Point. Um, it's such a unique venue and there's nothing like it. As as you know, the Ashtons are the ones who um, started it. Karen and Paul? Yes, um, started it and it's it has a 55 acre garden with 17 different themed gardens. It is just stunning. Have you, have you gone? Oh, I've been there in the yeah. spring. Yeah. yeah. In the spring. Actually, in the spring, they have their tulip, tulip festival. Tulip festival. Where it, Do they still have the big red barn, and they have all kinds of conventions and things right. out there? Right, right. Yeah, the barn. In the yeah. barn. Yeah, the barn is, is... It is a barn. It's great. Yeah, it, it, it looks like a barn, but inside it's not a barn. No, it's not. It actually has a large stage, and then it has tiered seating right. also. Yeah. yeah, a great place to hold a meeting, right. It's a wonderful place. So every year for the Tulip Festival, they plant 250,000 bulbs every year, and they yank them out every year. And I was out there for a meeting just this last um, summer when they were just yanking them out. They just yank them out because then they sell them to locals, uh, about a dozen or a baker's dozen for a so why do they pull each. them out and then they sell them and then they plant brand new ones because the new ones have bigger, bulbs. better bulbs? Yeah, now. yeah. Okay. Um, the bulbs will produce year after year. You know but what, they I get put in, what I know about gardening? What? Right here on the top of my thumb. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, gosh. And I'll tell you another time about my vegetable garden in my backyard currently. But, but you've done pretty well with that garden. I have. Yes, I, have. I know. Yes, but I know. Thanks. Well, Utah Valley is a great place. Thank to my son for that. Great place to grow gardens. It is. Actually, now that we are bringing that up, and a lot of people do garden. But back to the Children's Museum. Um, Thanksgiving Point is in the final phase of its fundraising for this museum, and it's, I love it. It's called the Museum of Natural Curiosity. Oh, that's Isn't that great. great? That is great. That so, is great. So wonderful. And they've secured $22 million for the $26 million project, and they're expecting to break ground the first or second quarter of 2012 and then open in 2013. Oh, that would be nice. So it's going to have three different sections to the museum. It's all hands-on for the kids. One is Kidopolis, which is a city. Kidopolis? How okay. a city is run with, with banks and mayors and city councilmen and real estate and all that is Kidopolis. The other one is Rainforest and where we get our water and how we preserve water and talking about where the rain and all the water comes from. And actually, and then the other one is Water Works, which is more specifically on um, on water and how we use it in the cities and that. So, so do they explain all, I mean, some something or someone is explaining all of this? Oh yeah, it's it's wonderful. It's all hands-on. Can you go if you're not that, a child? Yes, yeah, but bring your grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely go if you're not a child. So that's going to be built, um, I believe it's going to be by the children's gardens out there by the the gardens. When you go into Thanksgiving Point, you, then you head towards the golf course and turn right to the so gardens. You go slightly, you come in and you go slightly to the north. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it'll, that's that's where that will be. Okay. That sounds just like something we should all 
decide to do. Right, and you can buy a family pass, uh, an annual family pass at Thanksgiving Point. Um, I'm not going to quote the price because I don't know if it's changed, but it's extremely reasonable. But do they still have the dinosaur show and things museum, going, the they museum do. going on with that? Because I took a granddaughter to that this year. Oh, did you? And it was really fun. Yeah, that's called the Museum of Ancient Life. And something really, f well, it, it's amazing. I love it when I take meeting planners there because there are paleontologists there working constantly. You can see them. You watch them. And they will give you the tours. And it's just amazing what they know and what they share. And um, they actually, in the past, have had 12, I believe it's 12, little garden gnomes, you know, the little red oh, hat yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah. And they have them placed throughout the whole museum and all the exhibits. And it's a fun thing to look and find them. Well, it was a little easy, they said, for a while because of the red. So they re repainted them. And so now you have to look for you them. You have to look harder. I remember them. I remember seeing them. Another thing they do there that's so fun, Pat, that you might want to do with your grandkids sometime is they have a dinosaurs where you can spend the night in the museum with all these. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah you can spend the Bring night. Bring your sleeping bag and uh -huh. stay in the, no, that's scary. <laughs> that would be scary. That's the real life night at the museum is, is going That there. would be it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they have wonderful, wonderful programs there. And Thanksgiving Point, as you know, it's right in Lehigh, so it's the north end of our, our county. It's very close to the Salt Lake Airport also, only about a I'd say a 25 minute drive from the Salt Lake City Airport. And it's about 25 minutes from here. Right. From right. Provo, from downtown Provo. It, we, we keep mentioning Provo, and really Utah County has a number of towns, and eventually we're going to talk about all of them. Right. And the things that are going on within each one. But because it's the county seat also, then that's why we focused a little bit here to start with. But I know that there are things going all the way up and down. I don't know how far our county goes down. Do we go down to Payson? Payson. Mm -hmm. We go beyond that a little bit, somewhere down there. I can't remember. Maybe Santa Quinn. Salem, Santa Quinn. I should know. Salem and Santa Quinn and down in that area. No, I don't think Salem is. I have a map right here. A little bit in Salem. Okay, okay, okay. Because it really is a wonderful, right. wonderful county, and we've Good got a patient. gigantic, gig Gigantic. That didn't come out right. Or ginormous. Ginormous. That's a good one. A I like ginormous. We have a ginormous <laughs> lake for our little community. And all kinds of things going out on the lake. Do you know? Do you know it's been underwater out there? We had spring runoff, and there was a lot of water, and all the you couldn't get down, you couldn't get your boats down, and all the things were underwater. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so much water. Yeah, there was water across some of the uh, vines, or what the things they call them. The, oh yeah, for the shrimp. Yeah, whatever uh, out there. Well, there. I was just up, um, went on a Harley ride. No, you did. Up, oh, I did. Went on a Harley. Girl, you're getting wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, now people know. Um, went on a Harley ride up the canyon and I was so surprised. I have never seen Deer Creek Reservoir so full. Because right up under the bridge. Yes. Right, right up yes. under the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, so it, we had so much snow last year, good runoff, good water supply. And I'm hoping that all the snow this year, because I'm originally from South Carolina, y'all. <laughs> and I was raised in Southern California with my children. My children and I were raised. Yeah, who raised who, Pat? <laughs> who raised who? I said it right the first time. <laughs> and so being in the snow makes me crazy. So I'm hoping it'll stay on the mountains. Mm -hmm. And you that ski can go up there and just ski your little hearts away. Do you go up still and, and mess around up there? Or do you really do something significant? Well, um, up until a year and a half ago, I could probably follow any man on any trail through the trees but i tore my acl oh i, I remember right you had that thing that boot that huge thing on my leg yeah it wasn't sexy at all well <laughs> not it, even. it was what it was and i gotta tell you i'm very grateful for it and so that was a year and a half ago i had the surgery and i did go back skiing last year and did you? i went oh, four times good. and but i wear a sports brace and i'm just really thrilled my doctor told me and he was right the knee that I injured and they put in the new ACL is stronger than my supposedly healthy knee. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, by the fourth time skiing, I was skiing fast again and feeling confident, but um, I'm really excited about this year because I'm much stronger. But thanks for asking. You're yeah. so, you're yeah. so nice. Thank you. We're, uh, Julia's going to be on with us for the next few weeks, and we're looking forward to that. And tomorrow, um, we're going to have uh, two ladies on with me. We hope that you'll join us at that time and uh, be with us to find out what else is going on. Joey, we have a little bit of time. Is there anything that you would like to bring up uh, about how you got your job or what happened? Um, 
and how long you're going to stay there. What are you doing with your life? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Um, my, my husband passed away in um, 2006, and um, shortly after that, I got a p phone call from Pat telling me of a job opening at the oh, Chamber. Oh, that's right. At okay. the Chamber of Commerce, yeah, yeah. and she said, Julia, go ahead and, and apply. You'll get the job. And I thought, I'm not doing too well here. I'm, I, need to, I just wanted to stay in my cave and lick my wounds and feel sorry for myself. But she said, go, go. It'll be the best thing for you. So I hung up the phone, and I thought, and I said, fine. So I threw together a resume, went down and had an interview with Steve Densley. And I didn't want to work. I didn't have to work for a while. I thought, I don't want to do this. And about 20 minutes into the interview, I'm sitting there, and Steve's talking to me. And I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking, oh, shoot, I'm going to get the job. <laughs> Darn it. I don't want to work yet. But you know, Pat, you were right. It was the best thing for me. It really I, was. I lost a daughter about 14 years ago. And uh, one of the things I learned from that experience is that grieving goes on and different times comes back to you. But if you stay busy and you're doing something good and, and something that really benefits other people, if it's a service, right? Uh, there's a great reward that comes from that. And, and pretty soon you don't ever forget what has happened. Uh, of losing that person, you think about them, but it becomes manageable because you're you're doing other things and you're serving other people. And and I want you to know that I'm glad that you went from that job to this one because this. Well, is and that was you again, Pat. That was Pat I know, again. Always butting in somebody. She called me again and she goes, "Okay, Julia, here's your next job." And I said, "What? I can't go. I've only been here six months. That's not right. I can't leave." And she says to me, she says, honey, at your age, it doesn't matter. Move on. <laughs> so I've been there. It'll be, it'll be five years in March. Oh, I didn't realize it's been that Five long. years. Yeah, it's been five years. So it's a great job. I love what I do. I love all the people I meet. And I love representing Utah Valley. And I also represent Utah as a whole also. So I, I couldn't be happier. It's a great job. And it keeps me busy and out of trouble. Well, this uh, and this next step that you're taking by being on streaming video with us on the internet, and also um, we're on the radio at the same time. Yes, we are. HQN, 8, uh, 1480 AM. Uh, we're excited about this. And I'm particularly excited to have you really as my first guest because I started on on radio, I don't it's been, what, 20 years ago? And uh, I thought I was through after about mm -hmm. 15 or 20 years. And so it's exciting to come back and, uh, and be involved in uh, something I didn't even understand, which was streaming video. <laughs> and to learn about that, and grateful to the people that have helped make that possible um, to be where we are today. I want to thank a couple of people. I want to thank Pete Hansen, who's a photographer here in the Provo area. Uh, for the facility that we're using. I want to thank uh, Kirk Crosby because he's helping us technically today along with Kent Borkeek. And our producer for this show is Nikki Howell. And uh, we're grateful to all of them for what they have contributed and make it possible. And we do hope that you'll tune in every day. I'm going to be here every day with the Pat Sheranian Show with guests. And uh, also I do a show early in the morning. I'm on from 9 to 10. Uh, talking about Kayani for a full hour. So if you're on the internet, you can watch us pat.utahvalleylive.com and uh, catch us every morning, 9 to 10 a.m. Utah time. When do we change time? Soon. Is that coming up soon? I think, didn't they push it back to November? It used know. to be October. But check soon. it's Utah time, and then this, pro this program is 12 to noon every day if you're listening to us or watching us from somewhere else. Uh, share the fun that we're having. We hope that uh, will be fun for you and that you'll want to share it with people. And uh, we're grateful to be here today. And thank you for listening and thank you for being with us. And I'm getting a sign that we're not off the air yet. You want a hug? No, no, we're, no, no we're not we off, can talk off about the your personal area. Life. No, I promised you that you would not <laughs> ask me about my personal life. We're talking about my personal life? <laughs> I, later, dear. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that later. But really quick, I'm just so grateful. Um, Pat came into my life and d during that traumatic time. And um, it, you've just been such a gift to me, and I just admire you so much. And I'm just really happy for you that you have this opportunity to do it again. Would because, you tell them I didn't pay you to say that? No, she didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> because cause you are a professional, and, and you are well-known and well-respected here. Not, not just in Utah, but a lot of people 
know you. As you know, I lived in California for 20 years, Orange County, California, where I raised my children. And we know a lot of the same people. That was really a fun thing to find out that we did. I lived many years in the west of Beverly Hills area and then also in Newport Beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, was, that was fun. I raised my children uh, playing volleyball on the Santa Monica beaches. And uh, oh, that was a lot of fun. A lot of swimming and surfing. And, um, and every winter about November, I keep thinking, I'm, I'm homesick, but I'm not sure what it's for. And I realize it's southern, sunny Southern California. I, I do miss that, but I love, I love Utah. I love the changing seasons and all that we're doing. So it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to be able to put all of this together. If you have just joined us, we're going to give you a couple of phone numbers again. Um, this is our very first show. This is the kickoff of the Pat Sheranian show on KHQN. Did I do that backwards? KHQN, okay, uh, 1480 AM. And uh, we're happy to have them be our carrier for what we're doing uh, for our talent and our non-talent and our professionalism and sometimes not. And who's to, who's, <laughs> who's to say who's what? Thank you very much and have a great day.